Number one gives us the dashed function, which I've highlighted here in blue is F and the solid function is G. We want to express G in terms of X. So I want to write G of X equals what do I need to do to F to get it to be equal to G or to land on G. And so um, if you look here, it looks like it's a reflection left and right. And so um, let me just do that on here. And we want to leave this point in the same spot. So I'm just going to move that back there. So we reflected over the Y axis because that keeps that point the same when you reflect um, whatever line you're on, any point on that line stays in the same spot. So this was a reflection over the Y axis. And when you're writing an equation, a reflection over the Y axis puts a negative inside of the function. So G of X is gonna equal to F of negative X, meaning that the opposite values give back um, the same input. So like negative one and one give back the same number, negative two and positive two give back the same number. So number two, the table gives some values of functions f and g, which of the following equations could be true for all values. So when we're looking in here, the way you're reading this is f of x equals the opposite of g of x. So when we're plugging in an x value, it's the same x value, but it's going to give back opposite y values. So we're going to look at negative two here f of x and g of x should be opposites of each other, okay? And they are not. Four and one-fourth are not opposites of each other. So this is false. Part B says that um, f of x equals g of negative x. So this one is talking about when we put opposite values into the function, they equal each other. Their outputs equal. So opposite inputs equal the same output. So when we look at opposite values of x, so f of negative 2 should equal g of 2. And so you see here how this is f of negative 2 and the output for 2 for g is 4. Those are the same. Okay, we could look again at negative 1 and 1. So f of negative 1 is 2, g of 1 is 2. So opposite inputs give the same output. So b is our true answer there. Number 3, we have the graph of function f. Part A says, on the same axis, sketch the graph of f of x reflected over the y-axis, then up 3. So if we're going to flip this um, over the y-axis, I'm just going to duplicate this. So we'll flip it over the y-axis, which means left and right. So we'll switch it over the y-axis. It's going to keep this point in the same spot. And then we want to move up three. So this looks like it's maybe um, down about three or maybe 2.5. But so that point is going to just move up about three. Um, and then let me change this color. So this one um, is for part A. And then part B says write an equation write an equation in terms of f for a function g that has the new graph that you drew. So for this new graph, we'll call it g of x. That's going to equal, again, a reflection over the um, y-axis, which will put a negative inside of our function. And then up 3 puts a plus 3 on the outside of our function. All right, then number four, describe a transformation of the line that contains these two labeled points. Um, so we could just um, move the line so that it hits one of these points. We're going to translate it up. And I mean, this could go anywhere. This line just has to hit one of the points. So let's um, just say translate the line until it um, until it touches 
one of the points. You can pick either one. I'm going to do negative 2, 1, okay, until it touches or intersects um, with negative 2, 1. And so we just move that line to there. Again, it doesn't matter where this line is moving on there. That's why we don't just say translate up three units. I mean, you certainly could translate it up three units because then this point would land exactly there. But it's not the only way that you can do that. So I'm just going to say translate the line until it touches um, the point negative to one. Then we need it to go through this point. So this needs to stay the same. This one needs to stay set. And then we just need to turn this or rotate it. So then rotate the line around the point that's set, around the point that we already have that we want. So around the point negative to one until it um, touches or lands on the other point, one, four. So translate it until it touches the first point, then rotate it around that point until it touches your second point. And so if you think rotating this, I can't get it to just stay there, but um, so that it you would just rotate it so it turns up. All right, number five, the thermostat in an apartment is set to 75 degrees while the owner is awake and to 60 while the owner sleeps. The function W gives the temperature um, in degrees Fahrenheit in the apartment X hours after midnight. Um, when it is hot outside, the owner changes the setting to be exactly 10 degrees warmer than W, okay, than what she had it set before to save energy, or he or she. Um, the function H gives the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit X hours after midnight when it's hot outside. So if W of 6.5 equals 75, what would be the corresponding point on H? So remember, H is exactly 10 degrees warmer. So for H of 6.5, this is going to equal 75 um, plus 10, or your W function plus 10. So H of 6.5 is going to equal 85, so 10, exactly 10 degrees warmer. So if W of 2 equals 60, what's the corresponding point on H? So H of 2 would equal 60 plus 10, or that W of 2 plus 10. So H of 2 is going to equal 70. And then write an expression for H in terms of W. So then H um, of T. So here's your W function, right? So here's your W of 6.5 or your W of 2. So you're going to take W of T, whatever she normally had it set at, and then you're going to add 10 degrees. So H of T is going to equal W of T plus 10. Number six, a ball is hit in the air. Its height in feet T seconds after it's hit is modeled by this equation. Which equation models the height of a ball following the same path, but it's hit two seconds after the first ball? So remember, two seconds after, and we're talking the time now. So this is going to impact the T value. So something is going to change in the T. So it's not A or B which is impacting the output, this is impacting the input. And remember, two seconds after when we go inside of the function, it's always kind of opposite of what you think it's going to be. So two seconds after seems like it should be plus two, but it's actually minus two so that the functions match. 